In the last part of the video, we're gonna talk about strike slip faults. And I wanna start out by contrasting strike slip faults and the last kind of fault we talked about, thrust faults. So let's pretend that on this side, we're gonna deal with thrust faults. And in a thrust fault, we had a, uh, we were thinking about stresses where we're pushing on that block. So we're confining that block horizontally. So imagine that we're pushing this way, pushing this way, so we're kind of squishing the block down like that. And in the case of a thrust fault, we're imagining that we're also confining the sides pretty well. So this stress can be similar to this stress, or this pushing, you can think of it, is similar to this pushing. So if you imagine you're squeezing this block, well, where's, where's the material gotta go? It kind of pops out of the block, right? And so that's why you end up with a fault going this way and it raising up, kind of like coming up off the fault plane, like that. Okay, it's lifted up and pushed in one of these directions because the fault plane has had to do this number. Right, we, we broke it going that way. Um, in a strike slip fault though, uh, we're dealing with something that shares some similarities, but it also has some differences to a thrust fault. So in this situation, I also want you to pretend that we're kind of confining the block, pushing it this way. Um, but this time, we're gonna make these forces on the side, this pushing on the side, pretty small relative to this. Now, notice I say relative. It doesn't mean that there's nothing pushing on the sides. It just means that this pushing, this force is so much relative to this force that it's almost like we're not confined as much to the sides. Uh, so what happens in this scenario is that the block kind of has a different fault plane. Okay, it's almost like it's vertical. And so we're gonna slide the block back and forth from the sides. So I'm gonna draw kind of a simple, simple picture of what something like this might look like. So maybe it looks like this, where I've pushed this way and this block has slid forward and this block over here has slid toward me okay and there's not very big stresses or forces pushing this in from the side so we're getting most sliding like that we call these strike slip faults because this direction the direction that the fault plane is at the surface, uh, we call that strike. So it's, it's a line of equal elevation that's on the fault plane, it describes the direction of the fault plane. And if all the slip or all the movement of that fault happens in the same direction as strike or is in the direction of the fault plane, then it's slipping in the direction of strike. We call it strike slip. So let's see what this looks like. Um, in Plato, but also uh, just to go over some quick symbols for people who uh, care about this kind of thing. Sometimes you'll see these symbols on the end of um, on the end of these fault blocks, and um, for example, some of them have these little X's, and some of them have little points. And students tend to try and memorize what, which is which and which indicates what. Uh, here's where that comes from. If you imagined an arrow, like a vector, like this, um, sorry guys, and it's got a crosshairs at the end and it's got a pointy tip on it. If you were looking at it from the front end, you'd only see the outline of this cone and the pointy tip. It would look like this. And if you were looking at it from the back end, you'd see the outline of the cone and you'd see the crosshairs and it'd look like that. So when you see something like this, it means that the thing you're looking at has moved away from you. 
And when you see this, it means the thing you're looking at has moved toward you. Let's look at this in Play-Doh. Gotta look at it in Play-Doh form. So we're gonna have a plane, just like we've had in the last two examples, is our plexiglass bolt plane. And I have a river on top this time. So I'm gonna take that plane. Strike slip faults can be almost vertical. And I'm gonna cut my rock units down like that. Now remember, strike slip faults are moving like this, front, front to back if we're looking at it like we're driving our little car like this. So I'm gonna move this side down a little ways. So we've moved it relative to the other side. Now from this side, if this is our road cut and we're driving along, we may not notice a difference, but let's look at this in map view. In map view, we definitely see that there's been some offset. So this part of the river channel matched up with this part of the river channel and it's moved to the side. If you're standing on this side of the fault, let's go stand on this side of the fault. It looks like the river channel has moved to the left. And if you're standing on this side of the fault, it also moves like the river channel has moved to the left. That those points should have matched up, but now it's moved to the left. So this is how we know that this is a sinistral strike slip fault. Sinistral will move to the left. If it had been the case that this block had moved to the right, that would be a dextral like strike slip fault. Uh, so what you might see if you're in the field, so let's say, sorry, <laughs> let's say you're in the field, you're walking around, you would be able to notice maybe some channel offset like this, and you'd actually see jags in the channel. And if you go on Google Earth and you look at a place like Wallace Creek um, in the Carrizo Plain, you can, see, you can go down in one of those channels in Wallace Creek and see that kind of creek offset. So I hope this video has helped you understand the difference between the three different main kinds of faults. And if you have any questions, just contact me. Thanks.